Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project and Magnetic Reversal News, bringing you a magnetic excursion update Friday, July 25th, around 10 p.m. Mountain Time, 2025. Take a look at this. Iceland is in full eruption, continuing for the eighth day. A major cinder cone has developed, and the activity continues while... Extremely bad air quality exists for most of the peninsula. Keep calm. It's boom time. Severe storms eye New York City area after extreme heat pumps. Well, it feels like the temperature is up to 107 degrees. Holy macaroni. Heat advisories and extreme heat warnings are in effect from late morning Friday until mid-evening for heat indices surpassing 100 degrees for several hours. Hours of powers. And it may feel like 110 before severe storms arrive. The extreme heat will peak across the Northeast Friday with feels like temperatures over 105 degrees possible. The heat will fuel scattered storm development along the cold front as it moves southeast. Now, where do the 110 degree temperatures come from? Their imagination, perhaps? Weather alert, severe storms with damaging winds and heavy rain and flooding in greater Akron. Holy macaroni. Let's take a look at Tornado HQ and see what's going on. We've got five severe weather warnings in Illinois and Texas, the top two. We've got Bureau and Putnam Counties in Illinois, Brewster and Terrell in Texas, and Bowman and Skype in North Dakota. These storms don't look particularly dangerous, except for the ones here moving now through Indiana. Let me see if I can get those updated. Yeah. Yeah. Take a look at these storms coming through Indiana tonight. Holy macaroni. So if you're in Kunki or Bloomington or Champaign, these storms are headed your way. And we've got a severe thunderstorm warning now out for Bureau and Putnam County. So heed the warnings. Come over to Tornado HQ for all the live updates. Tropical update. We've got zero chance of any... Uh, from Disturbance 1 of accumulation of information there. So no need to worry about that. Let's check the Eastern Pacific. Disturbance 2, a 40% chance of cyclone formation. Disturbance 1 now at 60% chance. Could be headed to Hawaii. We're going to keep a close eye on that as the tropical weather increases. And now the full forecast. Heat wave expands to the east coast. Flash flooding likely in the central plains into the Midwest. Severe thunderstorms in the northeast. Dangerous prolonged heat is ongoing in the mid-south and the mid-Mississippi Valley as heat expands into the northeast for a brief period today. Wide scattered instances of flash flooding due to heavy rain and forecasts from the northeast Kansas to much of Indiana scattered strong to severe thunderstorms are possible. Take a look at these w uh, severe storm watches, heat above and below and on the east coast. Whew, we need a reprieve. Well, we're going to get it. Let's take a look at the thermodynamics and the cooling that's coming. No one's bumming here. Let's go with the shaded. That's better. All right, here we are, Saturday into Sunday. Not even going to get to 80 in Pennsylvania. And if we move this through towards August, take a look at this. 75, 67, 66, 67. The Northeast is going to be, well, chilling by the first week of August. These are the high temperatures during the day. 75, 77, 71, they're not going to know what happened up there. And by the time we get to August 3rd, holy macaroni, it's going to be barely summer in the northeast and the east as well. As the heat transitions to the west here, 
Take a look at this. By the first week of August, all that hot is going to be west of the Rockies, except for the Four Corners region. We're going to be staying in the green. Holy macaroni. I love my place. Seismic update. No real quakes of note. Continuing activity on the Kamchatka. Yeah, these aftershocks have come to a close and all the fear mongers on the planet can suck it because they're all wrong. Nothing is happening on the Kamchatka because you're not a geologist. You're just an idiot on the internet that thinks they know something. So please go away. What's not going away is the eruption on the Reykjanes Peninsula. Here we can see it's constrained to just one major small cone caldera, but the activity is huge. This is not a small feature. This is hundreds of feet across and wide and major amounts of uh, lava are pouring out of this cone. As we speak, this is the live and we may go live on Rumble after the show. So make sure to support us over there. Worldwide Volcano News for the 25th of July. Semaru, who knew? Now you do. 15,000 foot there. Popo, volcanic ash observed. San to 22,000 feet. Livotolo to 6,000. Talika, ongoing volcanic ash. Raventador to 14,000 feet. Santa Guito to 13, San Gay to 22,000 feet. Semadu, who knew now you'd do 15,000 foot blast there. Popo, steam and gas emissions occurring. Livotolo, 6,000 foot puff. Talika, volcanic ash has been seen. Svartsvangi, the Reykjanes Peninsula, the activity at the eruption site has declined but is ongoing. Raventador, 14,000 foot blast. Livotolo to 6,000. San Gay to 22,000. Popo to 22,000. Semadu, who knew? Now you do 18,000 foot blast there. Wrapping up the list is Semadu, who knew? We just told you. Holy macaroni. SpaceX launches a pair of NASA satellites in, to probe the origins of space weather. Now, they just had an outage and they still don't know what happened there, so... We're keeping a close eye on that. But two NASA satellites rocketed into orbit in, from California aboard the SpaceX Falcon 9 Wednesday, commencing a $170 million mission to study a phenomenon of space physics that has eluded researchers since the dawn of the space age. And guess where they're going? Yeah, to the poles of Earth. Yeah, they're going to be looking at plasma discharge on Earth. Why do you think that's happening? What's, what's going on? Space weather update for July 26th. Three-day geomagnetic forecast showing tomorrow or the next day we could be getting into G1 geomagnetic storm, but currently flaring has dropped down into the B range and the sun is quiet. Physicists discover a new state of quantum matter. What does that mean? Well, buckle up, buttercup. Researchers at the University of California, Irvine, have discovered a new state of quantum matter. The state exists within a material that the team reports could lead to a new era of self-charging computers and ones capable of withstanding the challenges of deep space travel. Sounds like zero point energy to me. What say you? Leave a comment below. And all of the bases in DNA and RNA have now been found in meteorites. The discovery adds to the evidence that suggests life precursors came from space, a.k.a. panspermia. Leah and I have been shouting at the top of our lungs about these scientific breakthroughs and how that, well, just because our current paradigm doesn't meet the data, well, the data meets the new paradigm. Panspermia is key and we'll break it all down tomorrow.
tomorrow on our radio show. But before we get there, we've got a members only video over at Oppenheimer Ranch Project. We want to get you all, all you members to go check it out. This is exclusive insider information at the Oppenheimer Ranch Project. Go check it out. Members only. And you can become a member for like, I think, 50, 50 cents a month. And that's a boom. Be safe. We love you. Become a member on YouTube and get exclusive access to members-only content. And be safe. We love you. Yeah.